topic today is the compelling case of Indian alternatives. So to take us through this, we have a speaker, Mr. Shazad Madon, who is the head of PMS and Alternative Assets Nippon India. Mr. Shazad uh, joined Nippon India in June 2010. And since then, he has been instrumental in setting up alternative investment businesses from scratch. He has more than 25 years of industry experience across banking, investment management, and the financial services sector. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you here with us, Mr. Shazad. A very good morning to you, and thank you so much for joining us uh, virtually. Uh, good morning, Shruti. Uh, I guess I'm visible, and thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Shruti, for this wonderful introduction. Uh, great to be here with all of you guys. Quickly, let's dive into really the the key, the crux of the matter, and uh, what is the outlook for alternate investments going forward. I will share with you my screen. Before we start off with the what's happening on the local environment, I just thought I'll give you a little bit of a perspective of what's happening globally. And the follower, because that's, you know, as we know, things follow a global pattern too. Uh, this slide is a very, very busy slide. But this slide is a wonderful slide because in one slide it tells you everything you need to know of what's happening in the overall investment management industry and very specifically in the alternate investment management industry. Very busy slide. Don't focus in too much except what I tell you. So point number one, look at it that the industry has grown between 2003. This is the overall investment management industry from 31 billion to about 89 billion. The, the, the bar or the sub bar on the top where you see a uh, 3 billion in alternate investments has grown to 15 billion, which is a five-fold growth between 2003 to 2019 on an a business which was already matured out there. Uh, the other interesting thing, though we're not talking about that, is look at the absolutely the, the lowest bar, the smallest one, which you see right below. And it says that the 3 billion, which was in the index funds, a passive investment has grown to 18 billion. Great. So that's great growth at both ends, which is the alternate investment, which is the more fancy stuff, and at the lower end in the index fund. But what's got squeezed? Look at the number in between. And what you see out there is that the percentage share, which is the light blue column, the percentage share of, uh, of what is called core assets, which is your normal, uh, long only, and typical your standard assets, has actually gone down from 60% to a staggering 33%. That's quite unbelievable. But that's really what has happened. And that tells you really the trend of what's happening in the industry. Now, one more very staggering point, which I must highlight to you, is while you are looking at this is the global AUM split by product, which is on the on the left, on the on the left, uh, uh, on the left side, please look, please look at what's happening on the right side, which is the revenue split. When you look at the revenue split, as of 2019, 46% of the industry revenues are contributed by alternate investments, 46%, while the assets are only 16%. Now, that obviously means there's a lot of value add, and that's, there is a lot of onus on managers, therefore, to deliver returns, which can justify a higher income. Uh, just for, uh, for You can also compare it that almost every other asset class has actually seen fees shrinking over a period of time. So this is a wonderful slide, tells you the following. Alternatives have had the most outstanding growth over the last two decades in the US, not just in AUM, but also in terms of profitability, and today account for close to 50% of the industry share. Uh, similarly, you see the numbers in 2024. This slide is from BCG, and these are their proje projections of how the things should look going forward. So net-net, uh, great past two decades, and a positive growth going forward where they actually believe that the revenue share and the asset share of alternate investments should go up. Uh, so that's on the global thing. A couple of more points globally, which are important to highlight, uh, just two points here, is that unlike India, which is essentially a local HNI market, the global market for alternatives is essentially a institutional market with 80% of the money by pension funds, sovereign funds, insurance companies globally. So very, very different from what's happening here, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes from now. And uh, globally, a lot of the growth over these last few years, as well as in the future, is likely to grow fairly significantly. This data of, uh, of emerging markets accounting for both in terms of flow, as well as in terms of investment opportunities, about 50% of the growth 
comes from CAII Association. So this is their data. So that's the interesting global perspective to keep in the backdrop. Uh, moving on to what's happened in India, obviously something we are all very, very proud of, which is that this industry has grown from nothing in May 2012 to close to 2 lakh crores in September 2020. That's amazing, right? That's a CAGR of 118%. Quite, quite stunning. Something which we are very, very proud of. I'll just show you some other data and just compare the growth in the AIF industry vis-a-vis -vis maybe other, let us call it, investment vehicles. And what we've done out here, just for, you know, just to understand how this industry has grown, is taken the growth in the first eight years of the mutual fund industry. So we've taken the growth of the first eight years between 93 to 2001 when private sector mutual funds came, not obviously at the time when UTI was there. Uh, we've also done the same for PMS. In the case of PMS, of course, we've taken it from the period which data was available, which is from the period 2010, which is from the SEBI uh, sources. Uh, obviously, PMS was there earlier, but this is the first 10 years of growth and it also coincides with the period of uh, hectic and frantic growth in the PMS industry. And what you can see out here, and it's very, very clearly, that the AIF industry has grown at the fastest pace in the first eight years of growth. Now, I understand that this is from a low base and so on. I also understand that the value of money in, 2000, in 1993 and 2010 was different from the value of money in 2000, in, uh, 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 let us say, the, the decade after that. But the important thing which I want to leave with you is don't please take these numbers as precise. Please take these numbers as indicative and this shows the potential for what is there in the industry. Another way of looking at it is, oh, you know, that was of a low base. So we've just tried to take the growth over the last few years, actually. So which is, you know, what happened over the last five years, what happened over uh, three, two, one. And you can see out there in every year, it is outpacing the traditional platforms, and I believe it will. So both PMS and AIF, in our view, will grow significantly faster than the traditional asset class, which is mutual fund. We believe this is a trend which is here to stay and will continue to grow even faster. Uh, just, to just to conclude this part, I would just add a couple of more points here. It's not just the size of the industry, but the players which have come. And it's really wonderful that you have, you know, as per SEBI data, you've had 676 AIFs. And these are schemes, which are, sorry, not schemes, trusts which are registered. So when you look at schemes, the number of schemes will actually be far higher. So that's wonderful growth. And it's all across, across large players like ourselves. So across uh, boutiques, and across all sorts of managers, you are actually seeing the growth of the industry come through. And finally, I just mentioned, uh, just quickly to mention this, the growth in the AIF industry, in the AIF and PMS industry, is far higher, as you can see, over all time periods. I understand from a lower base and I understand the value of money, but far, far higher than what it is for, a, uh, for let us call it the traditional asset class. You know, when we thought, if you think, that the, the AIF industry has done well, uh, I think we are all in for a shocker. We just want to, I just want to tell you through this slide that the alternate investment industry in India is far, far higher. And we've done some study. Please take this as indicative. This is not a precise study. This is not because we've taken data from different sources, slightly different in times, because there's no single source. And what we've done is we've put together all the asset classes which are in alternatives, right? So we've taken everything from VC tech to real estate to credit and every single asset class. And what you see is that over $200 billion has already been invested in this country in alternate assets. I must, I must just mention here, just mention here that please note that this is, you know, it's stock, it's over a period of time. It's not something which has come in only last year or something, but it's been over a period of time. So to that extent, it may not be comparable to, let us say, mutual funds and so on and so forth. But I think the important point is that while a domestic size is in the vicinity of $20 uh, billion, domestic size is about $25 billion rather, the offshore part is far, far larger, significantly larger. Now, the offshore segment is close to is close to $200 billion, And most important is every single player every single global player and you can see the names on the right i don't need to uh, spell each of them out but every single player the leader in each of these fields is very much in india and the, what does that tell you it tells you that 
global institutional investors have participated in this market have done very well and have seen the potential in this market far far before i would say a lot of local players have and that's something which we need to learn see i would also just leave with you guys when you look at it when you look at domestic players you look at the in tech in vc in real estate most of the money is offshore money and this really reflects it and we believe that this is likely to change going forward so so coming to the last couple of slides so what does the next decade look for look like so one of the things which is happening is that your traditional pool which is primarily mutual funds is getting increasingly i will use the word regimented and you it is very very difficult to do any differentiation so various ways of looking at it if you look at uh, let's say where a large cap fund can invest you know precisely where a large cap fund can invest you know the number of stocks it can invest in only you know where a mid cap fund can invest you know where a multi cap fund can invest you know every single thing it's getting increasingly circumscribed you are and as the sizes of a lot of those funds are getting larger as the sizes of the lot of the funds are getting larger you can also see it's difficult for the manager to generate alpha same way a lot of the regulation in the let's say credit space and we know the credit event which has happened recently in the credit event which has happened recently what does that really tell you to my mind it just says that everything in the credit space uh, will move to will move to an aif platform over a period of time you've seen that happening and you will see it happening and today again on account of regulations pms has primarily become a listed industry a listed uh play only unlisted is not there of course that's great scope for pms but that's a separate story but i'm just trying to say that on account of various regulatory changes certain investment classes uh, will actually help uh, will help spur the growth of aif the other thing which is we we all know is affluence and as affluence increases the investors want a lot more innovation they want more than traditional equity and debt if you remember at the time of the lehman crisis i remember there were only two asset classes you could either do debt you could either do equity there was virtually nothing else available right today there is so much you can do you don't need to you can invest overseas should you choose to you can invest locally there is so much so so much you can do to in different asset classes which you couldn't do out there so that's that's wonderful great scope for delivering alpha we see that happening and we see a very other interesting trend which is while we are the come from a large house with uh, a lot of resources there are a lot of new managers which are also coming up and are doing exceedingly well in this industry so you recollect i mentioned 674 managers great pool to come with and you know we believe that the investment manager the investment management industry is you know is is really taking to the alternate investment class as is the as is the as is the wealth management industry who's really taken it so just to quickly conclude so we see from a next decade on the asset class side we see a great expansion in the number of asset classes so today too we are predominantly a lot of uh, public equity there's a lot of focus on you know public equities will continue to grow and be very very strong going forward but you will see a lot more asset classes coming out and as investment managers get experience you will see a lot lot more happening however i would like to say this is that performance will be the key and the alternate industry whether it is pms or aif will attract the best quality managers and why will they because you see this happening or you will see this happening over a period of time not immediately is that people when they want differentiation when they want results they will move to alternatives whether it's pms or aif and that is what if you have to earn your fees then you have to deliver the return or the performance which is what investors expect so that's from the asset class perspective you can clearly see that happen the second trend we see is that today from being essentially a domestic hni market it is going to become a more institutionalized market let me give you an example so today there is almost no participation of institutions in the in the aif space uh, quickly let me just put it in the following manner when you saw the epfo in 2016 in put there uh, for start investing in the uh public equities market of course through etfs today over this period they've accounted for 20% of the flows into the indian market that is from domestic investors and that's just in the first 4 to 5 years of their existence think what could happen over the next 20 years right and this is only a small share of their incremental flow we believe this trend will happen we believe this trend will happen in alternatives it's already there are uh, you know it's gradual it's not going to happen tomorrow morning but all the same these trends will happen lastly a lot of global investors too will choose to channelize their investment through the aif structure we've seen that happen in a couple of large middle eastern uh, uh, sovereigns who've chosen to invest through the aif so 
for all the reasons which I mentioned, we believe that the AIF industry globally as well as locally will have an outstanding future. And to sum it up, I would say that this industry, while this may sound like a pipe dream today, well, if anyone told you that we would get to 2 lakh crores within a short period of time, that would sound, which is 25 billion, that would sound like a very pipe dream. But trust me, by 2030, I would not be surprised if we get somewhere in the 200 to 250 billion uh, thing. Alternate investments are mainstream, and this is the future. So thank you so much for your time. Oh,